the nightly business report. Good evening. Tonight, State Minister of Finance announces the government will reveal its four-stage plan for relaxing vehicle import restrictions by August. Asian Development Bank expresses their readiness to assist Sri Lanka's tourism sector in boosting revenue while preserving the island's natural assets. The negative trend at the Colombo Stock Exchange appears to be prevailing once again as evidenced by consistent declines over the last few trading sessions. And Nissan has reduced plant production by one-third at its leading Japanese plant this month which includes cutting the output of a flagship crossover model. From Studio 24, here's Sina Mayadune. Good evening and thank you for joining us. State Minister of Finance Shahan Seymazinghe said that the government will announce its stance on relaxing the import of vehicles by August. Addressing the media, he said that the relaxed policies on vehicle imports will be made in four stages. The state minister articulated that the government plans to announce its stance on the easing of vehicle import restrictions by August. He elaborated that this announcement will include detailed information on how these restrictions will be systematically removed in stages. In the initial phase, the government intends to grant permission for the import of vehicles that are crucial for business operations and transportation needs. He further explained that the government is committed to ensuring that the country does not revert to the stringent import restrictions previously imposed, especially considering the forthcoming election. At the time when the initial import restrictions were implemented, all other import restrictions were lifted with the exception of those on vehicles. This upcoming announcement will clarify the government's strategy for phasing out these vehicle import restrictions. The State Minister underscored that in the first stage, the focus will be on authorizing the import of vehicles necessary for facilitating business activities and improving transportation infrastructure. Looking ahead, the Minister indicated that the government aims to permit the import of vehicles for private consumption by the first quarter of 2025. The Asian Development Bank officials said they are ready to support Sri Lanka's tourism sector to earn more revenue while protecting the island's natural assets as the country sees a recovery in visitor volumes. Takafumi Kadono, country director ADB Sri Lanka Resident Mission, said that the ADB is preparing a project that they would like to finance in the tourism space, which will support policy actions in the tourism sector to increase resilience to shocks and strengthen institutions and potentially streamline decision-making as well. There were concerns raised over visitation of nature reserves and also whale watching. Takio Konishi, Director General South Asia Regional Department in the ADB, said tourism is not without its challenges. ADB is partnering with various stakeholders in Sri Lanka to make the tourism more resilient and more sustainable. Part of that support is focusing on improving the resilience of the tourism sector. ADB said that Sri Lanka can further improve its biodiversity offer, particularly through wildlife tourism. The two were speaking at an ADB knowledge sharing event held in Colombo recently. Pavitrava Niarachi, the Minister of Wildlife, Forest Resources, Conservation and Irrigation, stated that compared to the past two years, 2024 is expected to see a significant rise in the number of local and foreign tourists visiting attractions managed by the Department of Forest Conservation. She noted that 364,521 tourists visited in the first half of 2024, with 40% of them of being tourists. Addressing a press briefing held under the press briefing series titled Two Years of Progress and Way Forward, held at the Presidential Media Centre yesterday, Wildlife, Forest Resources, Conservation and Irrigation Minister Pavitra Vanyarachi further elaborated that compared to the past two years, 2024 is expected to see a significant increase in the number of local and foreign tourist visits at attractive destinations managed by Department of Forest Conservation. In 2022, 289,405 tourists visited these destinations and in 2023, the number rose to 444,053. In the first six months of 2024 alone, 364,521 tourists have already visited. Among these visitors, 19.8 were foreign tourists in 2022. This percentage increased to 27.8% in 2023 and has reached 40% so far in 2024. To strengthen the economy by earning foreign exchange, they have prepared regulations to uplift the eco-tourism industry, obtaining Parliament's approval and making the necessary legal amendments. 
Sri Lanka's State Minister of Foreign Affairs has called for decisive action against cybercrime centers and employment rackets taking place in some parts of the Asia-Pacific region at a regional forum. Speaking at the 31st ministerial meeting of the ASEAN Regional Forum held in Laos, Tarag Balasuriya called for the Asia-Pacific region considerately address emerging challenges including security-related aspects of the new and emerging technologies such as artificial intelligence with a view to taking preventive measures against their misuse. He stated that in addition to sustaining the Asia-Pacific region's efforts to promote peace, security and cooperation, the forum must address challenges to cyber and network security systems and tackle transitional organized crime. He called for decisive action against cybercrime centers and employment records taking place in some parts of the region. During and after the country's economic crisis, several Sri Lankans travelled abroad on visit visa to find employment. A group of Sri Lankans held in Myanmar were repatriated earlier this year with the help of the International Organization of Migration providing logistical assistance. State-run Airport and Aviation Services Limited plans to float a new tender to resume work on the second terminal in mid-September after a bilateral debt restructure made funds from Japan available. This was mentioned by its chairman, Atula Galkatia. The original contractor self-terminated the contract after completing only 5% of the terminal when Sri Lanka defaulted on its debt in 2022. As a result, Sri Lanka had to pay 52 million in termination fees under the contract terms. The half-built substructure of the terminal, which was safety hazard and was deteriorating, was then completed by a local contractor hired by the AASL. Through the contractor pulled put when the Japan International Cooperation Agency had suspended the projects after the sovereign default, the consultants, Japan Airport consultants, were retained at Sri Lanka's expense. The original design had to be changed to accommodate new regulations and cost had also risen in the meantime. JICA, however, had agreed to provide the gap funding and Sri Lanka had already done the preliminary work to float a tender, he said. Colombo Airport passenger traffic was fast approaching pre-COVID levels and the airport agency was trying to start work on the new terminal as soon as possible. An attempt to start an interim terminal to with 30 check-in counters in a separate building has got down in legal action. Let's go for a short break. Updates from the stock market right after this. This is the Nile Business Report. Welcome back to the Nile Business Report. The negative trend at the Colombo Stock Exchange appears to be prevailing once again, as evidenced by consistent declines over the last few trading sessions. This week began with both the ASPI and the S&P SL20 indices recording lows for the third consecutive session. To discuss further whether this negative trend will persist throughout the week or if we can expect a turnaround, we connect with Ranjan Ranatunga from First Capital Holdings for a summary of today's trading session and a forecast for the week's market behavior. Yes, Fina. So on the equity markets, the lethargic sentiment on the SPI continues towards the today's session as well, mainly due to the political uncertainty in the country with the announcement of the presidential election for 21st September 2024. With this, we saw both SPI and SMP SL20 indexes closing their flat while the turnover slumped to a near seven-month low at 376 million. Meanwhile, among the top turnover contributors for the day, John Q's Holdings led the turnover with a contribution of 10%, while Haley's followed next, being the second largest contributor for the day's aggregate turnover. Meanwhile, interest was seen on the apparel sector during today's trading session, with interest on, seen on Haley's fabric as well as Texas Jersey Lanka. The main reason behind the increased activity on the apparel sector was with the announcement of the earnings for the month of June 2024, where a 4% growth was seen. Meanwhile, on the foreign equity side, a net inflow of 1.8 million was seen for the day, with interest coming in towards LB Finance, John Keys Holdings and People's Leasing Company, PLC. Meanwhile, looking ahead, we expect the lethargic sentiment in the market to continue mainly due to the prevailing political uncertainty in the country. However, we expect a several big trades to take place on selected companies, mainly due to the undervalued status of the market. In terms of corporate earnings, we expect corporate earnings to be 
good for the coming quarters, mainly due to the recovery in GDP we have seen in the last couple of months. Moreover, we have also seen a substantial pickup in business activity through improved sales, mainly due to the improved disposable incomes of people. With this, we believe this will trickle down to profit comparability through increased sales and improved utilization. Thank you. Prices of safe haven gold climbed today on heightened geopolitical tensions in the Middle East and a bit expectations of a U.S. rate cut in September, while focus shifted to the Federal Reserve's policy meeting due later this week. Spot gold was up 0.3% at $2,391.80 per ounce. The U.S. Central Bank's Federal Open Market Committee meets on July 30th and 31st and is expected to keep rates unchanged between 5.2% five percent and 5.50 percent however softer u.s jobs data in june cooling and comments from top fed officials have prompted the rate futures market to fully price in a 25 basis point cut in september Oil prices were stable today as fears of a widening conflict in the Middle East after a rocket strike in the Israeli-occupied Golan Heights put a floor under last week's price losses. Brent crude futures gained 7 cents or 0.09 percent to $81.20 a barrel. U.S. West Texas Intermediate crude futures rose by 1 cent or 0.01 percent to $77.17. The Brent and WTI benchmarks lost 1.8 percent and 3.7 percent respectively last week on sagging Chinese demand and hopes of a Gaza ceasefire agreement. Data released this month showed that China's total fuel oil imports dropped 11% in the first half of 2024, raising concerns about the wider demand outlook in the world's biggest crude importer. The Sri Lankan rupee has appreciated slightly against the US dollar today compared to last week, according to the Central Bank of Sri Lanka. Accordingly, the buying rate of the US dollar has reduced from 298 rupees and 71 cents to 298 rupees and 48 cents, while the selling rate has also dropped from 307 rupees and 95 cents to 307 rupees and 77 cents. The rupee has depreciated against a basket of foreign currencies, while it has appreciated against some Gulf currencies. Let's observe how the rates behaved. Short commercial break. Let's have a look at the corporate world right after this. This is the Nile Business Report. Welcome back to the Nile Business Report. Aiken Spence Hotels have achieved a remarkable milestone in sustainable tourism with all five of its Maldives resorts receiving the prestigious Green Globe certification. This accolade highlights the company's unwavering dedication to sustainability stewardship and its leadership in responsible tourism practices within one of the world's most pristine marine environments. The five resorts under Aiken Spence Hotels, Heritance Ara Maldives, Adaran Prestige Vadu, Adaran Select Miduparu, Adaran Select Huturan Fushi and Adaran Club Ranalhi have each been certified with the Green Globe Standard 1.7, achieving scores surpassing 86%, exemplifying the exceptional commitment to sustainability across all operational facets. Heritance Ara stands as the first LEED Gold Certified property in the Maldives, setting a new standard for sustainable building practices in the region. Aitken Spence Hotels has implemented comprehensive initiatives across all its Maldives properties to minimize environmental impact. These efforts encompass the eradication of single-use plastics, the establishment of rainwater harvesting systems, 
and the use of native plant landscaping to preserve local biodiversity and coral restoration projects. Stasani Jaiwardhana, the Joint Deputy Chairperson and Joint Managing Director of Aitken Spence Hotels Holdings, shared her views, stating that in achieving the Green Globe Sustainability Certification for all their Maldives properties in 2024, they underscore their steadfast commitment to integrating sustainable practices across all operations. Maharaja Foods Limited marked a significant milestone in becoming the first woman-owned enterprise in the agribusiness sector with roots in the northern province to list its shares on the Empower Board of the Colombo Stock Exchange. The board is dedicated to facilitating efficient global capital raising for small and medium-sized companies. Maharaja Foods Limited's initial public offering of 25 million ordinary voting shares at 5 rupees per share aimed at raising 125 million rupees for expanding operations and enhancing market presence. The IPO exceeded expectations with demand nearly three times its offering size. It received 662 applications for 64.436 million shares, valued at 322 rupees, 183 million, highlighting strong investor confidence. Reflecting on this remarkable milestone, Mr. Vijayanath Guganathan, chairman of Maharaja Foods Limited, expressed that when Maharaja Foods was founded, their vision was clear and it was to bring Sri Lanka's authentic flavours and rich culinary heritage to kitchens worldwide. Maharaja Foods Limited is one of the key companies that were identified by the United States Agency for International Development and CSE through the joint capital raising awareness events for SMEs hosted in Jaffna, Mathura, Colombo and other regional hubs. These events aim to inform SMEs on the benefits of listing and raised awareness about the additional support offered by USAID through its Catalyze Private Sector Development Projects Funding Readiness Program. In a landmark move to drive digital transformation for small and medium-sized enterprises, Dialog Enterprise has signed a Memorandum of Understanding with Commercial Bank of Ceylon PLC, Global Linker and Data Box Technologies on Commercial Bank Leap Global Linker, an innovative web solution designed to empower entrepreneurs through digital marketing and e-commerce. Dialog Enterprise, the premier digital innovation catalyst across various enterprise scales, joins forces with Commercial Bank as a technology partner for their e-commerce platform, mobilizing the digital marketing sphere of SMEs in Sri Lanka. Together with Global Linker, a B2B business networking platform with commerce capabilities to make SMEs business digitally discoverable and Data Box Technologies, the managed service provider that ensures seamless integration and technical support, the partnership aims to set a new standard in the digital marketplace for SMEs in Sri Lanka. Coin Salon, in collaboration with Intersect MBO, has marked a significant milestone in the blockchain landscape by launching the first Intersect community hub in South Asia here in Sri Lanka. This landmark event held at the Royal Colombo Golf Club United blockchain enthusiasts, developers, diplomats and industry leaders all committed to promoting innovation, collaboration and governance within the Cardano ecosystem. Coin Ceylon has been a pioneering force in Sri Lanka's blockchain sector. The company was instrumental in launching the nation's first Cardano stake pool, establishing the first blockchain forum, creating Sri Lanka's inaugural multi-purpose Cardano Yaka CNFT collection alongside many other blockchain events and meetups, and conducting education initiatives to promote how to use blockchain technologies in an effective and ethical manner. Intersect, a member-based organization, is dedicated to ensuring the sustainability and future development of the Cardano ecosystem. By rallying members around a shared vision, the Intersect promotes a more resilient, secure, transparent and innovative Cardano network. Members are empowered to guide Cardano's strategic direction through active participation in steering groups, committees and advisory boards. 
In a strategic move towards advancing digital payment solutions in Sri Lanka, WebEx Pay welcomes Tilak Piyadigama, a veteran with over three decades of experience in banking and technology. He was appointed as its new executive chairman and is set to lead WebEx Pay into a new era of digital payment innovation with a focus on enhancing financial inclusions and driving economic growth across Sri Lanka. Piyadigama's distinguished career is marked by significant achievements in digital transformation transformation within the banking sector both in Sri Lanka and internationally. Let's take a short commercial break. This is the Nile Business Report. Welcome back to the Nile Business Report. Asian stocks started the week with gains ahead of central bank policy meetings in the United States and Japan after a broad rally on Wall Street that capped a tumultuous week. In Tokyo, the Nikkei 225 index surged 2.1% to 38,468.63. The key focus in Asian markets this week will be the Bank of Japan's monetary policy meeting on Wednesday, where investors widely expect the central bank to raise its key interest rates from its near zero level to perhaps up to 0.3%. Hong Kong's Hang Seng added 1.6% to 17,287.28 and the Shanghai Composite Indices rose 0.4% to 2,893.08. Australia's S&P ASX 200 advanced 0.8% to 7,989.60 and in South Korea the Cosby jumped 1.2% to 2,765.53. Nissan cut planned production by a third at its top Japanese plant this month, a move that will also see its slash output of a flagship crossover model as it struggles with weak US demand for its aging lineup. Nissan looks to be facing a deepening problem in the US. The sources say it cut output by a third at its top Japanese plant this month as it struggles with demand. Among other things, that will slash production of its rogue crossover. The sources say it will now make around 10,000 of the cars for export, or about half what it had previously planned. There was no comment from the company. But the report comes just days after Nissan said its profits were almost completely wiped out over the April to June quarter. It's been forced to do big discounts to win sales in the US, amid criticism over an ageing lineup of models and weak demand for its electric cars. The company also doesn't offer hybrids in the American market, meaning it's missing out on the boom for such vehicles. Though Nissan has promised a wave of new model launches, analysts say its target of boosting sales by 1 million cars per year looks in doubt. Separately Monday, media reports said Mitsubishi Motors is in talks to join Nissan's alliance with local rival Honda. Analysts say that underscores the pressure on automakers to work together to develop zero-emission vehicles and other technologies. A three-way alliance would range Nissan's team against that led by Toyota, which partners with Suzuki, Subaru and Mazda. There was no immediate comment from any of the companies involved. That marks the end of today's nightly business report. We will see you again tomorrow with more key updates. Until then, I'm Sina Maya Dune. Have a good night.